Welcome Cox. Back in 2017, I designed an animatronic eye mechanism that used paper clips, an iris drawn with a marker pen and some truly shoddy 3D printing to work. And that was my first ever animatronic design. Over the years, I tweaked and refined the design. I experimented with all different kinds of mechanisms, different methods of making eyeballs, manufacturing techniques and controllers, gradually improving the design bit by bit. Some of these designs ended up in all sorts of unusual places I didn't expect. Last year, I designed a version that used no fasteners at all and simply snapped together. And in this video, I want to share with you guys what feels like the culmination of all these years of effort, my iMac version Epsilon 3. Lest you feel like I'm trying to be sneaky with my advertising, let me be upfront and announce right off the bat that I am now producing and selling for pre-order highly realistic animatronic compatible eyeballs and a modular and reprogrammable controller board to power all of this from a phone charger. You can find them at nmrobots.com, but whether you buy these or not, this design is open source, free to download, and I've produced extensive in-depth instructions both on my own website and Instructables. So as I mentioned, last time I removed all the fasteners in the design because it makes the design more elegant in my opinion and it also means I don't have to worry that the metric screws I have in the back of my IKEA shelves in Britain aren't the same as the imperial screws you've got in your garage. The trouble with that is that there were a lot of visually similar parts and multiple ways in which you could easily misinterpret the instructions and assemble it wrong. So what's even better than a snap fit part? parts that are pre-assembled. My new design more than halves the total number of components in the design, making it much harder to assemble the eyes incorrectly, and there's much less potential to break the small parts when you're snapping them in. The pivots are shaped like a cone that comes out and comes back in again, meaning it can rotate freely, prints easily, and is locked in place. Another feature is that this works with multiple different types of servo. It's kind of a nightmare that there are so many clones of the most popular servos, all with minor differences, but I tried to make it work with my favorite types of servo, and to double check the sizing, there's also a testing plate that will ensure you have the right fit. Over the years I've been through a lot of different designs for the actual eyeballs. I started with some simple handmade ones, then I graduated on to really complicated and labour intensive handmade ones, and eventually landed on a bit of a compromise. Ever since my first prototypes I've been getting requests to help people get their own realistic eyeballs, and had to turn them down because making them just takes so long. But after 12 months of searching, meetings with suppliers, samples, refinements and testing, I finally have a manufacturer who can make great quality realistic eyeballs that are compatible with my eye mechanisms. At the same time, I wanted to replicate the crazy level of realism I had with these eyes from back in 2019, with a thick resin lens to distort the image and give a deep depth effect, and realistic veins and colour gradient. I worked with JLC PCB and their white jet process 3D printers to develop an eye design that I'm really proud of, that I'd say is even better than my handmade ones because of the crystal clear lens and they even have a three dimensional texture on the iris. You can pre-order these on my website, they're the one part of this project I don't want to make open source because while I firmly, firmly believe in using this channel to spread free and accessible education about engineering and design, some of my own artistic work I don't think I should give away for free. Trust me, I'm as far away from being able to buy a house as the rest of my generation. You can also get 3D printable files and CAD for all of the mini projects I've showcased here on my Patreon page. When I first started controlling servos with an Arduino, I used an extra servo driver board and a whole load of jumper cables in this kind of rat's nest adjacent to the mechanism to power and drive everything. And it's only recently that I've started developing my own PCBs to condense some of that mess. 
I've been through a lot of versions of this design already and GLC PCB has helped me a lot with this whole process. They're very fast with an ordering process that only takes a few minutes and instant quotations. I started out with a board which was pretty much just a holder for an Arduino Nano and then I added some power management so I could take a 12 volt battery and power the controller and eyes at the same time. But what I really wanted was to have an Arduino or whatever it might be actually embedded as part of the singular PCB design. I tried doing this by directly taking the Arduino Nano Blueprint and trying to pretty much make my own version of that, but I could never get it working and it seemed like even if I did, it would be kind of a faff with bootloading and surrogate boards and I couldn't be bothered with all that. Eventually, I found an open source design for a Raspberry Pi Pico by Susan Works on the open source hardware lab. This was so much better because my newest board designs come from the factory exactly the same as a regular Pico board would, ready to use. So I used Susan's open source layout as a starting point to design my iMac board, and I also added a switch so you can put it into assembly mode, a socket for my controller, more on that later, and you still have access to all the pins so you can reprogram it like a regular Pico, just with an extra output for up to three amps of power, which is conveniently what a fast charging USB-C can supply. Big thanks to JLC PCB for helping me out with this. They are low cost, starting at only $2 for one to eight layer PCBs. They deliver super fast and they have super tight quality control and reliability. And they're running a special on six layer PCBs. You can get $30 off and enjoy top quality six layer PCBs for just $5. I made a few different versions of this controller so far. It is very reminiscent of a nunchuck, but the unique requirement it has that I need to be able to adjust the openness of the eyelids with a slider of sorts, and then ideally be able to leave it there, whereas most controllers have sprung levers that don't hold their position. I wanted to try something a bit different, and so remembering that I had this 3D scanner from my Bionic Hand project, I actually molded some clay by hand to what felt like a decent ergonomic controller and 3D scanned it to serve as the base for my new controller design. I based the controller design around a PCB that's designed to work with an 8-pin DIN cable. Now I know that won't be the most popular choice when my main PCB works off the beloved USB-C, but hear me out for a second on this. The mini DIN connector actually fits your standard dewpoint connectors, which makes it really handy for development or integration into other types of prototypes. And it means that the controller itself can be much simpler and doesn't need to have any sort of processor or any way to handle its own data. You can pre-order the controller board on my website, but it will be releasing a little later than the other parts since this one still needs some work. I think I can squeeze some more range of motion out of the joystick itself since the motion is a little shallow at the moment, but it's really coming along well and for some finishing touches, I made it snap fit together and I used fuzzy printing to get a nice textured surface on the buttons. The eye mechanism still works great without it. By the way, if it doesn't detect the controller connected, it goes into auto mode. Or alternatively, if you know what you're doing, you can use my old controller design, which has hand soldered components and just wire them straight into the DIN connector or the header pins I left on my control board. A year and a half ago, I was on a holiday, relaxing with some drinks, music videos playing in the background, when suddenly my spidey senses tingle and I noticed my own eye mechanism design in a Grammy award winning songs music video from one of my favourite musicians. I later found out that it was no fault of any of the artists or producers that worked on it, but actually came from manufacturers who produced my work, sold it as their own through a chain starting on Taobao, then AliExpress, then eBay in the UK and US. 
I'm not mad about it anymore. But guys, if you would like to use my work in a commercial application or just anything cool that a lot of people will see, let me know first. I might even be able to help you with it and some kind of credit would actually go a long way for me. So what's next for this project? Well, I need to make some improvements to the controller, but for now I have a strange sense of completion that's pretty new for me actually. In future, I would love to make a wireless controller, which would need some batteries and some kind of wireless communication circuit, which is way beyond me at this point in time. But who knows what I might learn or who I might get help from in the future. I also want to mention that you can get access to all of the CAD for all of the projects I've showcased here, including this nifty configuration tool I made for the different servo variations in Onshape by joining my Patreon page at any tier. And you can also do the same by joining my YouTube channel if that's more convenient. I'm going to keep the content the same on both. You might also want to discuss this project with like-minded folks on my Discord channel, which you can also find in the description. As always, a huge thanks to my patrons, and I'll see you guys next time.